All right. Um, okay, so uh, I, we've finished grading the midterms, and uh, <laughs> and the uh, the uh, the midterm grades are posted. Okay. Oops. All right. So. Um, All right. This is um, this is the distribution. Okay. Um, the median. The median's an eighty-eight. Uh, Q three is a ninety-eight. Q one's a seventy-eight. Okay. Um, so we had a lot of people getting a hundred. A lot of so about a quarter quarter of students got a ninety-eight or higher. And then a quarter between 88 and 98, quarter, you know, below 78, you know. Okay. Anyway, uh, you're welcome to come by um, office hours, take a look at your uh, exam. Um, have any questions? Uh, that's that, okay? I don't. Uh, all right. I want to um, cover a, an application of MCMC, okay? So, well, before I begin, there's kind of a, there's a joke that, it's not even the, the funny joke, but okay. Uh, and, and, and it goes, uh, you know, MCMC is the worst way to get a sample, <laughs> all right? And it, it might be true. I don't know if it's the worst way to get a sample, but, um, but sometimes it's the only way, right? Okay, because in your homework, I'm having you do the Metropolis algorithm to sample values from the normal distribution with mean 10 and standard deviation 2, or yeah, I don't remember what I said, but in the homework, you're using um, the Metropolis algorithm to sample from the normal distribution, and uh, some students ask, why are we doing this? And that's a good question, because obviously, if we had to sample from the normal distribution, we should just use our norm. Um, but it, again, the assignment in the homework is to be illustrative, okay? And there, um, the great advantage in the Metropolis algorithm comes in the calculation of the acceptance prob probability, right? So in the um, in the ex the um, in the Metropolis algorithm and also the Metropolis-Hastings algorithm, the acceptance probability is the minimum value between 1 and the probability of the proposed value divided by the probability of the current value. Okay? And, and oftentimes, our PDF might be unnormalized. So you might have f of x is equal to some constant times, and I'm just going to jokingly call this the important part, but that's kind of how it goes. And again, the, the constant, the only purpose of the constant is so that the PDF integrates to 1, okay? So the PDF Uh, integrates to one, and you know, especially in something like in uh, Bayesian inference, we have the probability of some parameter theta given the data, and we say this is equal to the probability of the data given theta times the probability of theta, so the likelihood times the prior divided by the marginal. And this value in the marginal, this is um, this is a constant, and it's you know often difficult to compute. Okay, so this this constant in the the probability of the data in the bottom 
that part is difficult. But if we look at our acceptance probability, and we say it's the minimum of 1 versus the probability of proposed, if we're doing this, it would be the probability of our data given a proposed value, so I'm going to call that theta prime, times the prior probability of getting theta prime divided by the probability of the data. Okay, so that's the this is p proposed, and then p current is the probability of the data given your theta current. I'll just call this theta at time t. <clears throat> times probability of theta at time t divided by probability of the data. Okay? So this is this is our acceptance probability. And what we notice, whoops, sorry, is that this constant probability of data appears in the numerator and the denominator. And so we can just cancel them out. And we didn't have to bother calculating this p data. Okay, so p data appears in the numerator and denominator. And we can cancel, uh, and they cancel each other. Right. So, so we can avoid calculating the data. Right. This is a lot of MCMC boils down, not boils down to, but a big part of a lot of these methods is that we've avoided calculating p data, which is, which is a very difficult task for, for many different um, applications. OK. So, <clears throat> so we only have to figure out the likelihood times the prior probability. Which, which is a big, big advantage to us. OK, I'm going to show you an application that I think is kind of cool. And um, all right, so we will use MCMC for uh, decoding a cipher. All right, and this is uh, an application of the Metropolis algorithm. OK, so, so a cipher is basically, you know, you take this, this is something that you might have done when you were in like fifth grade or something, and you, you were trying to pass messages to your friends in class, but you didn't, you wanted to like make them a secret so that, you know, if you got caught, People couldn't read it, right? And so you might say, like, okay, we're gonna say let the letter A be the letter M, and B will be the letter N, and C, L, M, N, O, so on and so forth, until you get to um, um, like Z and Y. So Y, uh, Z would be L, and Y would be K, right? So this this is uh, called a ROT thirteen. Cipher. Anyway, you just you, we just shifted the letters over, but you could have um, mixed them up totally, right? And you could have said like A goes to T and B goes to K and C goes to G. You could have had some other thing, right? And and in this case, um, like let's say you wanted to pass the message and say uh, sweet or something like that. And um, let me see. Okay, so I got. Uh, Letters. Um, we're going to do uh, 13 through 26 and 1 through 12. Um, so this will we'll call this uh, A, 
And then the names of A will be the letters, all the letters. Okay. So so here's here's my cipher. So A has mapped to M and, and things like that. And then okay. So sweet would be uh, S would goes to E, and W goes to I, and E goes to Q, and T goes to F. Okay. So when you do that, um, you would get E I Q Q F. Right. All right. And then. Um, and then say so this is like this is what you write, and then your friend decodes. We'll say uh, deciphers, and they get uh, and they get back sweet, and uh, and now you can secretly pass messages in fifth grade, and then you know if your message gets intercepted by the teacher, they open it up, and the teacher is like e i q q f. And, and they don't know your secret message that you've been been passing. But then, you know, after you try to do like one sentence, you realize, oh my goodness, this is very uh, tedious and painful, and I don't have very much to say as a fifth grader, so I will stop. But um, but this is what we this is this is kind of the idea, right? So, but actually. Um, there was a there was an issue like, uh, it except it was going on in prisons and they were um, the guards had intercepted these messages but they were all ciphered right and they were these long messages and they were they were afraid that the uh, the prisoners had something important to say and they were trying to figure out how to decipher it and they just figured it would be a simple cipher this is not, we're not this is not like encryption grade anything this is just each. The 26 letters get mapped to 26 different letters, and we got to try to figure out how to how to undo this, right? And so, you know, how are you going to solve this, right? You might say, like, okay, um, here's a proposed key, um, and it might be like, okay, uh, maybe the letter A got mapped to the letter E, and uh, you know, other things and uh, you know, maybe the letter G get ma got mapped to the, to the letter I, and um, you know, maybe the T got mapped to the letter Q, and um, X got mapped to the letter F. And so, when you say E I Q Q F, when you decipher using this key, decipher with the wrong key, you get. Um, Going backwards, you get A, G, T, T, X. And you go, huh, that does not seem correct, right? So you look at this and you go, this, this is not, <laughs> this is not the right answer, okay? Um, and, and it, you just, and how do we know it's not the right answer? Well, one is it's not, it's not a real word, <clears throat> and we know this because this is not a real word. And who's ever seen the letter X, I mean, like the letter T come after the letter G or something like that, right? Like the, the letter sequence is also unlikely, right? Okay. <clears throat> Excuse me. Um, G followed by T followed by another T. That that seems to be unlikely, right? All right. So maybe there's another proposed key. And um, and maybe in this one, B got mapped to the letter E, and D gets mapped to the letter F, and uh, later on you have. Um, L gets mapped to the letter I, and O gets mapped to the letter Q. And so when you see E, I, Q, Q, F, and you decode it, you get B, L, O, O, D, and, and you get the word blood. And this is still the wrong deciphering, but this seems like, oh, maybe my fifth graders are up to no good. Um, 
and because it, it seems like a plausible answer, right? It 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 has like okay, so so this is still wrong, but more plausible, okay? And and we don't know this, but you know it's more plausible because it's a real word. And you know, BL is a common letter combo. Letter sequence, and so is OO. OO and 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 basically all of these letter sequences seem seem real. And so the goal is we want to figure out figure out the correct mapping. Okay, that's that's our goal. Okay. And so you might say, well, can we just brute force this, right? Can we just try every single possible mapping, right? Because this is like the entire space, and it's finite. It's not, there's not infinite. There's only 26, but, you know, how many possible mappings Okay, that's 26 factorial, and I, I typed it into Google earlier, and uh, and that's on the order of four times ten to the twenty-six um, permutations, which, which is a lot. It's it's asking a lot from your computer to try to do something like this. Um, and if we think about it, nearly all of the mappings will map to just more garbage and nonsense, right? Like most of these mappings will map to garbage and nonsense. Some of the mappings will map to uh, things that look realistic, like blood, because it was a real word, or sweet, or you know some other thing. But most of them will map to garbage, OK? Most mappings. Will produce garbage. Okay, uh, some will produce like reasonable uh, solutions. Okay, so um, so we want a way to assign scores to potential uh, mappings. Okay, so we need. A way to assign scores to potential mappings, and and our scores should be kind of probability based. All right, and so um, so what we're going to do is we're going to have two methods to score a potential mapping. Okay, so we'll have a combination of two methods two methods to uh, kind of score a, a proposed mapping of letters. Okay. The concept of proposed mapping makes sense, right? It's just like the letters A through Z get mapped to, you know, A gets mapped to M and B gets mapped to some other letter or something. Okay, so we want to um, we want to a way to score these kind of proposed mappings. And so one is we're gonna kind of ask, do we see real words? And um, in combination with, do we see common words, right? So, you know, we've intercepted uh, a letter going from one prisoner to another prisoner. So it's not just five letters. It's, it's you know, probably like 400 characters or something. And we, we want to try to uh, <coughs> decipher this, OK? So we got to, you know, so if somebody's writing a paragraph to another person, we would expect 
in that thing, we would expect to see words like the, and is, and I, and a, like those kind of words we expect to see very often, right? And this is often a, a strategy, um, you know, like the code breakers would try to use is they would try to isolate certain things that they would see over and over and they say, well, this, this is a three letter word that we see multiple times. I'm going to take a guess that this is the word the, or this is the word are, or something like that, okay? Because these are like very common, uh, common words, right? So, um, so for this, we will use um, an outside resource, and that will be the uh, word probability lexicon. And so these things exist, and basically, they look at the English language and they say, these are the you know, 100 most common words in the English language. And the, it will be words like the, is, a, i, stuff like that, OK? Um, and then you know, it, and it keeps going, and it, and it basically assigns like how common is a word, right? So, so in the word probability lexicon, words like the, is, a, I, these will have um, high values, okay? And then other words, I don't know, like tomato, this will be like a medium value. And then uh, as the words go on, you know, there will be like rare words. So um, I was, went, so there's, so there's quincunx. I don't know if you've heard of this. This is uh, this is a real word. It's a it's the plinko machine, okay? Where you drop the beads and they bounce around and they they form the normal distribution at the bottom. It's called a quincunx. So that that's you know a rare word, rare but real word. So it gets um, this gets a low value. I don't know other other words that are rare. I don't know. I'm trying to think. Something that, I don't know, uh, like zygote or something, right? Like, that's a real word, but it's not going to be used in daily conversation unless you're a reproductive person or something, OK? Um, OK, so these will get low values. And then, basically, um, words that are not in the dictionary. So if, you, if we come across a word that's like B, Z, G, K, and O, oh, this, this is a nonsense word. So this is not a real word. So this will this should get um, kind of the lowest possible kind of non-zero value. Because uh, these are probabilities and we're multiplying them together. And so we don't want to have a zero, because as soon as you multiply something by zero, it's going to zero the whole thing out. So, so we want to give it, like, it's possible that the prisoner was sending this, right? It's possible that, I don't know, that they, they wanted to encode, I don't know, the license plate of a car or something. And so you don't want to say there's zero probability of getting this. But you want to say it's, it's, it's pretty low to get this. So we're going to kind of give it the, the lowest possible <clears throat> And of course, the lowest possible non-zero value is like one over, what is, one over infinity or something, which, which, for all intents and purposes, is zero. But, um, but anyway, uh, that that's one way. So we're gonna take we're gonna take our uh, coded text and we're gonna split it up into words, and we're gonna say uh, we assign each word a value drawn from our lexicon and if that word doesn't exist in the lexicon we give it a very low value okay so that's that's one way to score it and so if we see words like the and is those you know the higher values okay and then um, the other part is um, the second method is we look and and there's lots of ways to do this but we're gonna what we're gonna do is we're gonna look at um, every sequence of two letters And um, 
we will uh, give um, higher scores to common two-letter combinations. Okay, so we give high scores to common two-letter combos and low scores to uh, uncommon ones. Okay, so so you like for example we had the word the original word was sweet right okay so if if we relied solely on the lexicon okay then we could have potential mappings that produce not real words but um, <clears throat> but some bad mappings are better than other bad mappings, okay? So for example, if we have sweet, you know, one one mapping could produce maybe uh, S gets mapped to S, maybe that's mapped correctly, but W gets mapped to J, E gets mapped to Q, and T gets mapped to um, P, right? And then another map, maybe, um, produces uh, B, L, E, E, J, okay? So both of these are um, nonsense words, okay? So neither of these will appear in the lexicon, and so they would both get the same score. But if we look at this, one looks closer to English than the other, right? We would say, B L E E, the, like that seems like it would could be part of a, a real word, and maybe just the last letter is wrong. Okay, so we want to we want to give B L E E J, which is not a real word, but we want to give it a better score than S J Q Q P. Okay, because so you you know both are both are n not real words. <coughs> So they get the same score according to the lexicon. But B L E E J looks more like more like a real word than the other one, right? Okay, so we, we need a score, we need a way to score this also. Okay, and so this will be based on looking at the two letter combinations and we say BL, that's a reasonable sequence of letters. LE, that's reasonable. EE is reasonable. EJ, I mean, that, that also appears in words like eject, okay? SJ, I don't know any words that have SJ in it. Any words that have JQ? Probably not, okay? And any words that have QQ? Like, like maybe, maybe these combinations do exist, but they're like, they seem very, very, very rare, right? Um, so, so basically what we're gonna have is we're gonna have a matrix that goes, that's 27 by 27, a 27 by 27 matrix, and we're gonna have the letters A, B, C, dot, 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 all the way down to X, Y, Z, and space, and then uh, followed by A, B, C, dot, 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 to X, Y, Z, followed, and space, okay? And we would expect combinations like T followed by H, so T followed by H, this would be a high value, okay? So, um, you know, I'm, I'm making up numbers. So this entire matrix would add up to one, okay? But, you know, I don't know, TH, I don't know, maybe gets 0 0.04, and this is like something very high, okay? Um, B followed by the letter Z, this would be, you know, a very low value, maybe like, 
1 times 10 to the minus 8 or something. I don't know. I'm making that up, okay? And then uh, B followed by the letter Y, this, this would be like a, a medium value, right? Because there's a lot of words that have B followed by Y. Um, so maybe this gets like 0 0.001 or something like that, okay? I don't know. But So we're going to produce a matrix, or we're, we need a matrix <coughs> that evaluates how often one letter follows another letter, right? So we would expect, you know, Q followed by U to be, uh, you know, fairly common, but Q followed by any other letter is going to be, like, almost non-existent, right? Very, very, very small values. Okay. So these are um, these are we're going to use kind of a combination of these. Um, scoring methods, okay? Does this, uh, so far, does this kind of make sense, what we're, what we're trying to do? Okay. All right. We need to, um, we need to modify our algorithm, though, okay? So we need a, we need to adapt, um, our algorithm to deal with the limitations of floating point arithmetic. Okay, so the, the numbers in the computer use 64 bits to represent the number, which means you cannot <coughs> have something <clears throat> with you know in infinite decimal places, you only have sixty-four bits to represent every single number in the real number line, um, and so uh, you know if we multiply a bunch of small values together, like point zero zero one times point zero zero six times point zero 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 four by you know like ten to the minus eight by et cetera et cetera et cetera. Um, you know, we could get a number like we could get you know four point two times ten to the negative four hundred eighty. Okay, some really tiny number. It's a re it's a real number, but it's so um, tiny, right? Because if we're multiplying, doing the product of probabilities, we we could get very tiny numbers. <coughs> And this would lead to uh, an underflow error, okay? Meaning the computer is no longer able to distinguish this from zero. Computer can't distinguish, you know, 4.2 times 10 to the negative 480 from zero. It thinks it's the same number. So, so what we'll do is instead, We'll deal with log probabilities, and our product will become a sum, and we'll have a sum of log probabilities. Okay, so we'll we'll take take all of these things, and we will take the log of each value, and we'll add them up, and we'll just get a very negative number rather than <clears throat> a number of close to zero. We're going to just get a very negative number. Okay, and so. Uh, so in the Metropolis algorithm, what we normally do is we do u from our unif, and then we say if u is less than probability of moving, then we move. Okay, and the probability of moving is equal to the min of one comma p propose divided by p current. So this is this is what we have in our metropolis algorithm. We're going to modify it modify to use logs. Okay? So so we're still going to do a u from our unif. <coughs> but then we're going to do if the log of the value u <clears throat> which is going to be a negative number, right? Because the largest value that u can be is 1, 
and the log of one is zero. And then um, anything less than one between zero and one is going to be a negative number, right? The, with the smallest being zero and the log of zero being negative infinity. And you know, we'll, we won't actually draw zero. So, so we're going to get log u being some negative number. And we're going to say if log u is less than log of probability move, then we'll move. So if log u is more negative than the log of um, the log of the um, move probability, we'll move. Okay. And so what is the log of the move probability? The log of the moving probability will be the minimum between not one but now zero. Zero is the largest possible value we can have. And then it will be log of p propose. minus log of p current. So instead of division, now you have subtraction. Okay, And then so that's going to be log of p move. And we'll use that to decide whether or not, <coughs> excuse me, to move. So, so it's still the Metropolis algorithm, except now we're dealing with log probabilities. Is this is the modification okay? Does that make sense what we're doing? And, and this is just so we can avoid underflow errors. It's not um, you know, if we had the computer of the future that can represent uh, no, the computer of the, I don't think we'll ever reach a point where we could represent all uh, line numbers on the uh, real number line, right? Because you would need an infinite number, infinite memory, just to represent the number pi, because it goes on to infinity. So, yeah. Are we sacrificing anything by doing this method, or is it? No, we're, we're not. We it's it's still it gets accepted with the exact same probability. Yeah. <clears throat> okay. So. Um, so this is so this is now our metropolis algorithm. Okay, to be used for uh, deciphering, okay? And so, you know, we start with an arbitrary mapping. So we start arbitrary mapping. And pretty much any arbitrary mapping you start off with, it's going to map to garbage. It's going to, it's going to be terrible, right? And if you think about, I, I can't even illustrate the probability space, but if you think about all 26 factorial possible mappings, like almost all of them map to pure garbage, and only a few of them map to something that's reasonable. And again, the, the thing about the Metropolis algorithm is you can start off in a totally garbage location and then you just kind of start searching and the algorithm favors things that have better scores or better probabilities. Okay, And so um, because we're using the combination of the two letters and the real words thing, when we find kind of a, a mapping that produces you know better two-letter combos, so instead of QQ but it's producing OO, we're going to say, hey, that's better. It's still garbage, but it's better. So we're going to move there, OK? And then we're going to say, all right, let's try other things, OK? And then maybe instead of getting um, KJ, it produces uh, ST. And you go, oh, ST, that looks like a real combo. That's better. We're going to move in that direction, OK? So we start with an arbitrary mapping, and then we propose a new mapping. And the new mapping is not going to just be a total random thing, but we're just going to, all we're going to do is we're going to just swap two letters in our current mapping. So maybe the current is that A, B, C, dot, 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 X, Y, Z, you know, maybe A maps to K and B maps to L, and C maps to M, and X maps to, I don't know, T, and Y maps to um, S, and Z maps to O, okay? 
So, you know, we propose, and maybe we propose, let's swap A and C. So what that's going to do is our proposed mapping is A will now map to M, and B will map to L, and C will map to K. Okay, so all we're doing is we're proposing swapping this. All of the other letters, X, Y, Z, these, everything else is unchanged. These all map to the same as before. Okay, and then um, we evaluate the proposed mapping. Okay, so, uh, so according to the Metropolis algorithm, we got to figure out probability of move, okay? And in this, this time we're going to do the log probability of moving, okay? So now we, uh, we find, we're going to find uh, log probability of move, okay? Which is going to be equal to the min of 0 and, okay, it's going to be a log of p propose minus log of p current. Okay. All right. So the probability of a map, or the uh, I should say, the log probability of some mapping, this is going to equal. So one is we are going to sum up basically the log probabilities of each word probability of each word is there a bird in here <laughs> according to the lexicon okay so we look at each word if it appears in the lexicon it gets a score all right so real words get like small negative values okay and like rare words get larger negative values, and like nonsense words get very large negative values, right? So we add all of those up, okay? And then we will also combine that with the log of basically the probability of each two letter combination um, in the text. Okay, so, so we add these together, and we figure it, we do this for the proposed mapping, we do this for the current mapping, and we'll, we'll get a log probability score that allows us to compare one mapping versus another. And both mappings in the beginning will probably map to pure garbage, but because of the two-letter evaluations, we can say this one looks a little bit more reasonable than this other combination. Okay, and um, and and that will help us find kind of the region where we have reasonable map mappings. Okay, and uh, and so you know if we think about it, this is actually a discrete probability space. Okay, there's 26 factorial discrete probability spaces. It's it's hard to draw because I I don't know how to draw such a thing, but you're just imagining okay. From one spot, you know, I can move to, um, I don't know, 26 to choose 2, because you're, you're just swapping two letters. So that these are all kind of the potential uh, swaps I can do. And you propose that, and you say, well, that, that's better, that one's not better. So we either accept or reject it with pro probability move, and then we go there, and then we keep, keep proposing. Uh, on Friday, uh, I have this coded up. We'll take a look at the code. And, uh, and we'll see it, uh, I hope, work. So, okay, so we'll, uh, we'll end there. So we'll see you guys on Friday.